All right, everyone, this is something I've been meaning to do for a while. So if you take a look at the daily login rewards, you might have noticed that very recently, a lot of people actually got access to their free legendary from the 150 day login rewards, Lordly Legionnaire. And that means that in less than a month, a lot of people are going to get their 180 day login reward, which is the free legendary Sill of the Drakes. Now I actually pulled Sill of the Drakes from Shards a while back, and I did a bit of testing with her, kind of a first look, but but now that it's been more time, I've really been able to experiment around with this champion a lot more and kind of refine what the best build and gear for her is going to be. So that's what I wanted to get into today. I wanted to share with you guys all the information that I have found out, including the details behind what is going to be her best gear and build. So let's get right to that. And we're going to start off talking about what her specialty is because she actually has a pretty big one. I'm actually really surprised when I first got her. It took me a little while to really realize realize what was it about her that made her so good it's very clear that it is going to be her passive her passive is absolutely crazy it is very good the amount of healing that you can end up getting from this passive is insane and of course to boot you've also got that 30 percent speed buff that's going to be placed on a random ally as well so this is really kind of the thing about her that makes her really really unique she's also got another uh you know good set of solid skills but this is the main thing that i really wanted to focus Focus on when it came to finding out what gear is going to be the best for her so because we want to build around her passive um, and this passive is going to activate the more turns that she takes the number one priority of course is going to be speed that's going to be the thing that you absolutely want to focus on the most so I'm going to talk through kind of the priority of stats that you want to focus on the pieces of gear that I actually chose of course I understand not everyone is going to have gear even close to this so I'll just tell you guys the stat priority none Nonetheless, and if you do want to cut down in certain areas of stats where you want to do so versus where you want to avoid cutting away stats. So speed is, of course, going to be number one. Number two is going to be accuracy. This is important, but once you get to the accuracy that you need, you know, 200 to 230 or so for Ultra Nightmare, um, at that point, then you don't need to get any more, of course. Uh, but that's really, really important because she's going to need it for her first skill right here for her decreased speed debuff, and she also has a stun on her second ability so after speed and accuracy next up of course is going to be defense she is a defense based champion which means not only is she going to get more tanky and more survivable with defense but her abilities scale off of it as well which means she's also going to do more damage as you build her defense so that's going to be next up for both damage and also for survivability now this is the point where i really changed direction here and what i decided not to focus on was um, you know a ton of damage after that. I did not go crazy on the crit chance and the crit damage because I really feel like speed because of her passive is going to be so much bigger of a priority. So you know next up on the list after speed, accuracy, and defense, if you can still somehow find ways to slot in crit chance and crit damage that's great extra damage is fantastic but because this passive is really the thing that makes her super unique you want to make sure to prioritize uh, you know any kind of benefit towards activating that passive which of course is why we're really focusing in on speed and then of course the last few stats are uh, you know attack hp and resistance which if you can find a little bit extra on your gear that's great if not not really that big of a deal so just kind of going through my gear here the weapon uh helmet and the shield are pretty self-explanatory just try to find as much speed as you can for the actual gear set of course speed is going to be the absolute best one but if you don't have amazing pieces of speed gear and somehow you have other sets that have really really good stats on it don't feel like you absolutely have to have speed as the only gear set i actually found um, an interesting choice here is if you do have any pieces of the relentless gear set definitely not a bad champion to do some experimentation around because she's going to have that extra chance to get an extra turn and of course her passive is going to activate at the start of her turn so if you can get those extra turns she's going to benefit by healing people even more so the weapon helmet and shield are pretty self-explanatory gloves are kind of where i ended up taking um you know a bit of a different choice here normally i would 
almost always 100% go with crit chance or crit damage, but I wanted to make sure to get her as survivable as possible. She's not going to be 100% crit build. I just wanted to get defense to make sure that she's going to be staying alive for that passive. Because if she dies, of course, she loses her passive and then my entire team loses healing and, you know, it's going to be a disaster after that. So I also did not have any speed gloves that really fit the criteria here. So I just decided to switch over to a defensive set here. As you can see, it does have a little bit of speed on it, but, uh, you know, this is what I decided to go with uh, for the gloves the chest as well i decided to go with defense now uh, if you feel like she's already survivable enough you can kind of do some tweaking some testing kind of run through the content that you're at if she's dying if other champions in her team are dying you can you know increase survivability if she's fine and she's not even getting close to dying you could decrease survivability um, and if you are short on accuracy you can always find a way to slot in an accuracy chest here however i feel like if you have uh, you know, your accuracy great hall being worked on, if you have an accuracy banner, um, and then through the other substats just that you're going to find randomly on other gear, you know, you should be getting close to the 200, 250 accuracy or so that you need. But this would be the point swapping into an accuracy chest if that's kind of a place where you need to get those stats because accuracy is very high on the list in order to activate her uh, debuffs on her first two skills. And then of course, boots are uh, just speed boots here. Um, these are the best ones that I could find for the criteria. And uh, for the jewelry or the accessories here, uh, the ring just decided to go with defense, of course, pretty basic. Now with the necklace, you kind of have two options here. Uh, you can either go with defense, just flat defense. It's not percentage based, or you can go with crit damage. You know, you might have to do a little bit of testing here. It kind of depends how much extra crit rate you have. I would definitely say that if you can somehow get over 60, 70% crit rate without really having to try for it, I would go for crit damage. But if not, you know, maybe defense is going to be best. I would definitely say, though, if you can find a way to get a little bit of extra accuracy as substats just through any of your gear, it's really going to make uh, help gearing out for, for that a lot easier. And of course the banner, you definitely want to go with accuracy. So that's what I focused on. And I definitely found that the improvement to this champion, this video and the footage that I'm going to show you guys. And after doing, you know, many days, weeks, and about, about a month or so of testing so much better than in that first video, she's actually pretty darn good. I'm really surprised and her passive is very, very solid. So now the question is, uh, should you book her? And I actually have not booked her yet. I've been thinking about it, and this is kind of the conclusion that I have come to about booking. Is she is going to take, if you do want to max out her books, a total of 11 books. You're looking at four on her first skill, five on her second skill for nine, and then two on her third skill for 11. And I would say free to play players. Yes, you are going to want to book her, but make sure that you book Rosin first. He's going to be a priority. That is another free legendary that you can get from Fusion. That's definitely going to be the first legendary that you really want to book as a free-to-play because you're going to have access to him. And I would say he probably has a bit more utility and functionality than Sill of the Drakes does. But if you don't feel like you are going to have access to a ton of legendaries um, and you don't really have a lot of choices and you do have a decent amount of books, I think she is a decent choice to book. Not the absolute best, though. Like, if you're not free-to-play and you have a ton of legendaries, she's definitely better to book than some of the bottom-tier legendaries. But I would easily say top tier legendaries are still going to be much higher and at the very top of the priority list before she does but she's definitely not at the bottom at all now when it comes to masteries here i still have not reset them though but a couple of things that i have noticed first of all very importantly as well for my uh, frozen banshee video these masteries here uh you know arcane celerity the ones that give you extra turn meter are very very powerful very strong masteries but you have to be careful if you are running a speed tuned to, uh, team for the clan boss, these masteries can easily mess up your speed tuning, so just be careful about that and keep that in mind before you pick up these masteries. Uh, but if that's not a concern to you, they are still very, very powerful. Of course, um, I think Lasting Gifts is one of the most important masteries because that's going to have a chance to extend her uh, speed buff on her actual passive, which normally only lasts for two turns here that's gonna have a 30 percent chance of now having that speed buff last for three turns so that's definitely a very solid one and of course lore of steel is going to give you additional bonuses to all of your basic artifact sets including of course speed so that's an important one the offense line of course is pretty basic for uh you know for most 
champions, I would say. I probably don't think, you know, something like Grim Resolve is necessary. You, you're probably better off picking up something like uh, increased damage for targets under shield, or you can go with this one here if you have, uh, you know, access to even more healing, making sure that you're always going to be at full HP. Now, I also want to do some testing with Lay on Hands here to see if it actually uh, has a significant impact on her, her passive. So if I do reset my Mastery Tree, that there's a couple of things that I would uh, do and still a little bit more further testing, of course, but definitely very close to getting her to uh, you know a very, very good point. And I wanted to end off here by sharing with you guys some footage through uh, Dragon clan boss and also the campaign and of course in dragon and clan boss i use the same five champions so you can get a comparison here just so you can kind of see how she actually does in combat and of course i uh, sped up the um you know kind of like the middle section of these runs here so that it doesn't take an eternity but um i did also decide to actually run with frozen banshee as well just to kind of see you can also get a comparison like frozen banshee is just phenomenal especially for the clan boss and you'll see that in a second but uh, i don't really have a, a a super strong aoe team here for dragon i really wanted to showcase sill of the drakes with uh several other champions that people are going to recognize and know that are considered to be good champions like Roz and scarhide sir nicholas of course considered to be one of the best voids in the game here but her healing is uh, its very, very solid. And you'll also see... Let's see here. Important to note as well, I'm running the game um, on uh, Ultra Settings, Unlimited FPS. So if you, uh, you know, for CPU reasons, if that's sometimes my CPU usage goes completely crazy when I, when I do this. But it's going to get you the fastest runs as well. For not just campaign, but also for things like dungeons. Maxed out on the buffs there. And she does do a pretty significant amount of damage. Now, of course, it's not going to compare to Frozen Banshee, because Frozen Banshee is going to be responsible for all those poisons and poison sensitivity. But in comparison to, like, Rosin Scarhide and even Sir Nicholas, she, considering I didn't build her with crit rate and crit damage, she's not too bad. You're looking at 700,000. Rosin there is at 550,000. Uh, and now let's move over to the clan boss. And then Sir Nicholas was at about a million. So she was like right in the middle of Rosin Scarhide and Sir Nicholas's damage. Which is, you know, that's pretty good considering that uh, my main focus was not getting her crit capped and crit damage. It was making sure she activates her passive as much as possible. And, and right now she's got about 250 speed. Now I mentioned if you need to trim back on stats, survivability is one of those things where... Uh, you know, if you feel like she's not even getting close to dying, you can cut back a little bit. Um, and, and at that point, uh, you want to make sure, though, to try your best to not cut back on speed. That's really the one thing that makes her super unique is that passive. Accuracy as well is one of those things where you, you get the amount that you need, but you don't need to go crazy. There's no reason to have 300, 350 accuracy or anything like that. I have an entire video where I really get into the details of accuracy and of course, Sir Nicholas here is such a tank god that he's the last one to survive. And you can see here, uh, her damage, Frozen Banshee, of course, just completely destroys everything. But once again, you know, looking at a bit higher than Raz and Scarhide and a little bit lower than Sir Nicholas, but definitely not too bad. And to end things off here, uh, I actually noticed she's not too bad in the campaign, even though that's not at all what she's really meant to do. She still does a pretty solid campaign run here. So... That uh, stun is really nice as well, making sure that the trash gets stunned so they don't have a chance to attack. Because, of course, if they have a chance to attack, that's going to slow your run down even more. And to end it off here, I think we're looking at a, I want to say, 21 second run. 21, 22, 21 second run. There we go. So... All right, everybody. You know, like I said, there's still a little bit more uh, fine-tuning to do. Uh, I'll still decide if books are an investment, but I know I have a lot of other champions that I want to skill book, but she's definitely not bad at all. I would easily say she is worth six-starring for sure, especially if you are free to play with the right gear, the right setup. You can turn her into a very, very solid champion. So... 
Uh, that's going to be it for the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you did and you want more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Feel free to leave a quick like as well. It means more than you can imagine. So thank you to all of you guys to do that. And more Raid Shadow Legends videos, guides, tutorials, all that fun stuff should be popping up on the screen. Feel free to check it out. But if not, until next time, take care, everyone. This is Salt of the Salty Guild, signing out.